Welcome to Let's Learn IT. In this video, we will configure and install Oracle SOA suit. Let's quickly see the architecture. As we have seen in the earlier video, we have two machines. In the first machine, we have Oracle WebLogic server installed. And in the second machine, we have installed Oracle database. Now in the first machine, we are going to install Oracle SOA suit and we will create domain and configure our clusters as well to install oracle soa suit first we need java then we will have to install weblogic infrastructure uh, then we can install fmw product uh, which in this case soa suit then we can configure product schemas using rcu in last we can configure domain and then once it is ready we can deploy it so uh, we have already seen how to install java and uh, how to install oracle weblogic server in the previous video in this video we will see how to install oracle soa suit we will see how to configure product schemas using rcu and then we will configure our domain here you can see we have already installed weblogic server and now we will be going to install oracle soa suit so we have already downloaded soa installables i will put the link so that you can refer and download it we run java minus jar here And here we'll have to give our inventory path. Click next. Here we will escape auto updates. And here we'll have to give Oracle home. You can also click on view and see what components are installed. So here you can see we already have Oracle Fusion middleware infrastructure. Click next. We will be selecting SOA suit. If you want to install bpm you can select bpm as well here you can save response file so that this can be installed silently our installation is completed click next now we can configure product schemas using rcu here you can see so i is installed now so this is the path for rcu and basically it is oracle home then oracle common then bin let's run the rcu click next now we have a couple of options here one is create repository another is drop repository so for now we are going to create repository and you can see under create repository also there are three options if you don't have dba privileges you can prepare scripts and for system load and then you can ask your dba to run those scripts and after that you will have to perform product load so here we have dba privileges with our schema so we will be choosing our first option our database is running on this host and the service name is pdb1 next now we will select components here so we will be installing soa suit so we are selecting soa suit here and all relevant components will be auto selected you can see oracle enterprise scheduler is not selected with soa suit and uh, it is not required as well for us uh, here you can give a prefix so i will be giving a prefix for the schemas okay now here you can uh, give same password for all schemas 
and you can also give different passwords for different schemas so i am giving same password for all these schemas now here you can uh, select di different profiles based on your requirement so we are selecting a small but if you are installing this for production environment you can select large benefit of using large is it will auto partition all the tables so it is good for production environment and we are not using healthcare integration so we'll keep it no next here you can click on manage table space if you want to change any configuration related to table spaces uh, but we will be using default configuration okay. okay click on create and here also you can save response file for silent installation our schema creation is completed we can configure our domain so this is the path where you can see config.sh uh, basically it is oracle home oracle common common and bin run config.sh so here we are going to create a new domain and i will be changing the domain location from u01 to u02 and we'll also change the name of domain here we will be selecting soa suit reference configuration and you will see it will auto select uh, em manager wsm policy jrf and coherence cluster extension And we will go with defaults now here we again change on this path from u01 to u02 and rest is fine so this will be application admin user i will be giving some password here Here we will choose production mode because it will give us more functionality in the web logic. It will give us create session and activate session option, and there are some other benefits we will cover in some other video. Here you can select JDK path. I'm choosing soft link which we had created earlier um, so that we can upgrade our Java easily if required. Here we will give our database information. Click on get RCU configuration. Next. So these are the list of data sources which will be created as part of this installation if you want to change anything you can select and change make sure all tests are successful click next here you can configure your key store um, but for now we are skipping this we will select admin server node manager and topology So here we will mention our listen address you can select enable ssl but for this video we are not going to enable this uh, click next here we will give a password for node manager
in this screen we can add servers so uh, so a server one is already added here we will click next here we are going to create a cluster though we have only one node but we are creating cluster so that we can utilize this cluster to adding more nodes in the future Next. deleting these templates because we are not going to use this template these templates are mainly for dynamic cluster which we are not using in this video here you can click next so add your server in the cluster we will go with defaults for the coherence cluster and here you can add machine so i am just adding one unix machine so i have given host name here so that we can easily identify our machine it can be any name and in node manager listen address also i am giving host name in the GID we have mentioned O install and in the UID we have mentioned Oracle. Now we will add admin server and uh, our manage server in that machine. Click next. We are not going to create any virtual target. Click next. And we are also not going to create any partitions. Create. Our installation is completed. Click next. So here we have domain location and admin server URL. Finish. Let us start our admin server. So for that, you will have to go to domain home. That is. And here we have a start weblogic.sh. Now it is prompting us for username and password. To avoid this, we can create a boot.properties file. So let's create that. Go to servers admin. And here we'll have to create security. And inside security, we will create boot.properties file. Give your username and password. And let us start it again. This time we will be using no hook command so that we can run this in background. We can check our logs in no hook dot out. So you can see it is starting without prompting us for username and password. So our admin server is up and running. Let us see. Our admin console is accessible. Let us log in. Navigate to environments and server. And here you can see we have our admin server and SOA server one. Let us start our node manager so that we can bring SOA server up. So this is the path where you can get start not manager dot sh it is domain home and then bin let us check the logs and 
it is started and we can start our SOA server. Let us also try to access EM console. We are able to log in into Enterprise Manager. And our SOA server is also up and running. That's it for this video. In next video, we are going to install Oracle Service Bus and we will create domain and cluster for that. So in this video, we have seen how to install Oracle SOA suit. And we have also configured our domain and create cluster. If you find this video helpful, please like my video, subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon for further notification. Also put a comment so that I can cover different topics for you. Thank you.